Okay, rolling. Uh, uh, oh, uh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds. Or is it six? <laughs> For a dragon's age, we now have 12,000 treasure. Or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Looks like I've got some things to do. <laughs> what is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you to a brand new Let's Play. That's right, it's Spyro the Dragon. We're going to be playing it on the PS4 with the Reignited Trilogy, which is, in my opinion, the definitive way to play this game now that it has gotten all of its quality of life updates, and it is in just so many ways obviously improved from the original. Before I rescue this dragon, we are going to jump right on into the options menu, and I just want to go over a couple of things that you're going to want to make sure you do as soon as you start this game. First things first, if you can, go into camera and make sure you turn motion blur off. This is usually defaulted to on, which I think they only default it to that to save face for the fact that it was implemented in the first place. You don't want motion blur. Trust me, it's going to hurt your eyes. Uh, the camera will also be set to passive. Now, this is up to preference, but if the camera is set to passive, uh, this means you have to do all of the camera control with the right stick. Active, it will try to follow Spyro. It's not necessarily perfect, but it's still more of a standard dynamic camera. And of course, you can invert the camera in any way you want. You look through the controls. I would also recommend uh, turning on the map. It makes your life a lot easier if you do so. And then subtitles is on or off. Obviously, since this is a Let's Play and I will be doing a lot of talking over the dialogue, I am going to leave the subtitles on. So, Spire of the Dragon, what is this game to the few people out there who don't actually know what it is? Well, it's a very standard mascot 3D action platformer adventure game uh, based back on the PlayStation 1. All three of the games in the original trilogy were released on the PS1 and have now been remastered by Toys for Bob for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, uh, PC, and then soon to come the Switch. And they did a phenomenal job, which you can see right off the bat, just based on how beautiful this game looks. It's absolutely well done. And they even did a, bit, a good job making the cutscenes so much better. Now we have actual voice actors for every single character in this game, as opposed to, I don't know, whoever was sitting around the studio on any given day. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. And that's all anybody's going to tell you because I'm probably going to be talking over the remainder of the cutscenes in this game. But uh, speaking of voice actors, I should mention really quickly that Spyro himself is being voiced by Tom Kenny. Yes, the very same Tom Kenny that is the voice of SpongeBob as well as many of other many other beloved video game and television characters. And I, he's probably done a couple movies here too. I don't really know his entire uh, discography, but uh, or filmography, I suppose I should say. But um, yeah, he's done quite a lot of stuff. He's very prolific, and he does a great job at bringing Spyro to life. Uh, considering the attitude that the character has. I mean, that's kind of what Spyro was all about. He was the cool character. He was the character that all kids thought was rad and awesome and wanted to relate to in that way. Um, uh, which I think was much more appealing at the time, you know, especially when at the time Sonic was in kind of a, wasn't really in a good spot. I don't think Sonic Adventure had actually yet come out when this first Spyro released. So the Sonic the Hedgehog at the time is not the same Sonic the Hedgehog that we have now where, you know, he's all about attitude and stuff like that. And so Spyro definitely filled a niche that wasn't available um, at the time. Um, I should mention, though, to anybody who has played the original Spyros but has not yet gotten the Re Reignited Trilogy, this game does play a little bit more difficultly uh, than uh, the original Spyro games, and it, just a little bit in that the characters, well, the animations are a lot more fluid, first of all, so therefore the characters actually move a lot faster. This also applies to the enemies. Um, and also, I should mention this when we do this jump right here, but your glide is a little bit steeper in this game than it is in the, than it is in the originals. Uh, you will start to dip a little bit more as you glide through the air, and therefore you will have a little bit of a harder time 
trying to make your jumps, but nothing's like impossible in this game by any means. And of course, this is all made easier later in Spyro 2 and 3 with an upgraded uh, little bonus move that you can add to your glide ability that we'll be getting into whenever we do tackle those games, which I honestly probably won't take that long because I am very excited to tackle the entirety of this trilogy. Uh, so the way that this Let's Play is going to work is I'm going to be 100%ing every level. I am not going to do the Platinum Trophies, meaning all the little menial random tasks that the trophies ask you to complete in each of the individual levels that might not necessarily be something that you uh, think about at first glance whenever you enter said levels. Uh, those are usually how they do their trophies. Not saying the trophies are difficult in this game, but I'm not going to make it a point to go after every single one of them as I play through this game. I am just going to be going for 100% in terms of dragon collections, eggs, and gems. Hey Spyro, press the jump button twice. And I am going to be gushing about the animation and the way that this game looks quite a lot because it is just, it is just so delightful. Like the way everything looks, the way everything feels, it, it plays exactly how a 3D platformer should in the modern era and is, in my opinion, definitive proof as to why these 3D platformers still work perfectly well uh, in this day and age. Like, this this game is exactly, like, it's the poster child for how a 3D platformer should work nowadays when so many people for so long have said that they don't really work anymore. Ukulele, this game is not. This game controls and plays just 100% beautifully. Not to say that I dislike ukulele necessarily. I actually do like that game a little bit more than most people. Wow, that was amazing. I do like this game a little bit, or that game, excuse me, more than most people did. Um, but this game is vastly superior in terms of the way that it plays and the way that it feels. It's just, like, it is exactly what a 3D platformer needs to be uh, in this generation and any future generations. You know, now that things are really more so about polish than they are about um, just getting down the actual techniques that a 3D platformer needs to get down, which is why I think so many of these 3D platformers haven't aged very well is because they basically just got down the bare essentials, while um, nowadays you need so much more than that. So further explaining mechanics, let's talk about Sparks for a minute. Sparks is Spyro's health, uh, or way of tracking his health. When he is at yellow, that means he has a full health. One hit will drop him down to blue, a second will drop him down to green, and then after that he will disappear altogether, which means just one more hit will kill Spyro and you will lose a life. Um, I will be getting into cheat codes at a later time. I'm not going to use the 99 life code. That would be dumb, but I will show what that is. Um, like, I'll explain how the cheat codes work. I will be showing off some of the more fun cheat codes, such as um, changing Spyro's color, giving him sunglasses, making him two-dimensional, all of that stuff. Um, oh, and I also didn't even ex further expound upon health. Uh, to get health, what you need to do is you need to take out any of the indigenous creatures that are in... Um, any of the worlds, for instance here in Artisan, it's the sheep, and they will drop butterflies, which Sparks then eats to uh, then replenish his health, should I ever take damage. Although, I do not think it is possible to take damage in Artisan, so it is not the best place to show that. So why don't we head on into the very first level, which is Stone Hill. And we will be completing the entirety of this level in this episode. I think I just have three more treasures left to get in Artisans proper and then should be good to go. Although I do believe it's all hidden behind that one door that I haven't actually opened. I don't know. I could check. Uh, something that you need to know uh, that, all, that Sparks also functions as is kind of a gem finder. Um, if you click in the left stick, uh, he will point towards whatever gems you need to find in the level. He won't be like exact, but he will point like in the direction of from wherever you're standing, which is, it's helpful. It's kind of like a radar. Um, which is pretty nice. So, getting down the bare essentials of how to play Spyro is really about knowing when to use your fire attack and when to charge enemies. Now, I can charge and fire both. Uh, I can use both on certain enemies. Like, it's totally a possible thing that you can do. Um, but certain enemies will require that you charge attack them, while others will require that you uh, breath attack them. It all depends on whatever what their attack style is. Uh, what kind of armor they might have. If they have any metal, you absolutely cannot fire attack them. You must charge them. Um, but certain enemies will be at uh, will be at such a range where breathing fire on them isn't a quick enough attack. So you actually need to instead to combat the slowness of their attack, charge them head on. And then, then of course, there is also the ability to dodge, which is not really the most like complex thing. It's a very it's a it's a mechanic, but it's not really a mechanic you necessarily need to know, except for in very niche circumstances. And it's more so of a panic button move maneuver than uh, anything, which you do by 
pressing in the right or left bumpers like so. Um, but it's, like I said, it's a very menial dodge, so you, more often than not, it's better to actually bait enemies' attacks to, like, run in, like run past them, or to just jump out of the way than it is to properly dodge. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to it with a Spyro. Very, very simple, uh, like I said, but just a delight to play. Like, I honestly, I've, I, I, I want to make it clear that I have actually never played, um, Spyro before 2019, before this year, I had never played a Spyro game. I didn't own a PS1 growing up. My first PlayStation console was the PS2. I did not play any, uh, any of the, uh, what is it, the Spyro, like, the story games, like, uh, like Enter the Dragonfly and A New Beginning and all those ones where he's voiced by, like, Elijah Wood and stuff like that. I didn't play those. Um, I, I haven't played any Spyro games up to this point, and so finally just sitting this uh, down with these and just playing them with fresh eyes and experiencing them all for the first time was, like, it has been the highlight of my year thus far, and as far as video games are concerned, and I'm just... It, it, like, I just want to share that with you guys. I just want to be like, hey, look, these games are amazing. Even if you have already played the originals or you've even already played the Reignited Trilogy and got there before I did, like, I just, I, I, I li listen, I want to gush about it, okay? They're wonderful. Um, I can see that there is also a treasure. Also, wow, dude, those are some tats right there. Like, look at that. Holy cow, man. Like, what does any of that even mean? Like, don't, do most tattoos, I believe... I, I, listen, I don't have any tattoos, so I can't, like, explain, but don't most people put tattoos on them with, like, meaning? Like, those are just... That looks like a treasure map on his arm. Anyways, we'll come back to this treasure chest whenever we find the key. There is going to be a key hidden throughout this level somewhere, and I actually do not remember quite off the top of my head where that is, but we will get to it eventually. So let's think we want to go this way. Yes, yes, yes. I see gems, so I obviously have it been this way. Okay. Um, like I said, we're also going to be getting all of the dragon eggs at every single level. Now, dragon eggs are usually held by what are known as dragon thieves. They're the little obnoxious guys that are dressed up. Um, like, what are they even dressed up as? Like, I can't even really begin to describe it. Um, they're, they're just... They're, 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 they're big condoms with eyes. Is that, that's the best way I can... <laughs> I hope, I hope they're not like actually supposed to be like based on some something, um, and I'm just being offensive. But that's basically what they are, and they deserve that calling to me because they're obnoxious little dickheads, and they deserve every single bit of slander that they get. Uh, and you will see why here in this level, because I know there is a dragon thief around here somewhere that we will be getting into a chase with uh, sooner or later. But, oh my gosh, I just, I can't get over it. Look at the little, the detail is just so sweet, and it's like, it's still so simplistic, but this, this right here, like, fully encompasses the things that I appreciate the most in a video game. It's not when they, when excruciating detail is necessarily paid attention to, to the point where, you know, there's so many little things that, oh, you could miss that, and you could miss this. Like, that's not what, like, what in video games that I look forward to. I don't... I don't necessarily care about the Red Redemption 2, the Red Dead Redemption 2s out there where they, you know, they care about a freaking, like, every single follicle of hair in a horse's mane and stuff like that. That's not, that's not what impresses me in video games. What does impress me is when game designers are able to find such beauty and simplicity. Like, they're able, okay, this, by the way, this is one of the Dragon Thieves. We're going to chase him down and then try to flame attack him. So just kind of stick to his path, and then eventually, once you get close enough, just breath attack him, and you'll be good to go. But uh, finding that beauty, uh, beauty in that simplicity, and bringing out the most of it um, in a way that, like, uh, that was not close enough, uh, in a way that I think everybody can connect with, that, in my opinion, is like the pinnacle of game design. That is what takes true artistry and true effort. Not trying to, like, you know freaking nitpick every single little detail and pay attention to all of the like it's and that's fine you games do not need to be because that's the th problem is the more you try to pay attention to little minute details and everything the more likely your audience is going to pay attention to those like, the very same details and therefore anything you did miss is more likely to get exposed but like for instance i don't freaking care about Spyro's eating habits in this game because that's not a mechanic that I'm told to care about. You know, I don't care about, um, you know, his interactions with people because they're very minimal and far and few between. You know, I don't care about the television shows that he watches because, again, these are not things that are brought attention to in this game and therefore I don't have to care about them. I'm not told to care about them and I don't, I don't need to. And that, in my opinion, is, you know, again, that is where game design truly shines when 
the things that it, the the few things that it needs to focus on are done perfectly. And this game, in my opinion, does those things absolutely perfectly. All right, so I just need to find a few more random gems. I think most of the rest of them are down in that treasure chest. So now I just need to locate the key. And I just remembered where it is. It is actually behind the return home teleporter. There's a little beach down here that you can now head down to. Grab a couple of gems, and then there is also a little cave over here, and this is where you are going to find the key after breaking through all of these things as well. And I might have missed the occasional like odd gem um, up top that Sparks will point me to if I have. Like there, that's that is I will say the biggest criticism I can make about this game is that everything is so beautiful, and there's so much bloom and lush environments in this game that it can actually obscure things that you're looking for at times but it's usually not too big of a deal because everything is so vibrant most things stand out pretty pretty well and you don't really have to worry about um any of that so uh it's usually just kind of in basic levels like these where that's more so of an issue okay so sparks where are the rest of mine i would imagine they're up top somewhere um not right here so yeah they're probably going to be up top Yes, indeed. Okay, so that's the way he's pointing. I'm, I'm willing to bet that, yes, that is going to be in the upper area. So let's just head over there and grab whatever last two gems we need. And we are going to be done with Stone Hill as well as this first episode. All right, Sparks, point, point me to him. Over here, right? There we go. They look like they're off in the distance somewhere. Oh, right here in a little treasure chest. Oh, it's just a single green gem. Perfect. Well... That is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Spyro Reignited, or I should just say Spyro the Dragon, because we're not taking, this isn't, the, the whole trilogy is not one Let's Play, excuse me. Um, okay, Sheep, you just asked for that because you got in my way, but we're going to head on back, and then we're going to call this an episode, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoy this first episode of Spyro the Dragon very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.